and said that I actually hadn't had any more um, work because people were saying to me, you must, oh, you must be doing loads of funerals with all these people dying. And I said, well, no. Um, I just came back from um, uh, doing a funeral and uh, I was, I was so angry, which now the anger has left me. So one was sat on one side of the chapel. They came in separately. The other was sat on the other side, both crying into their tissues and keep looking at each other. So that they couldn't be together. They both walked out separately, went outside, stood their social distancing and just cried and desperately wanted to hug each other. A bit stunned, very disappointed, sad. Nothing to do with the funeral is to do with the fact yet another person who has died has had COVID-19 put on their death certificate and they didn't die of that. Yes, this is what I'm finding. It, uh, just only today, it was about, something was online about the vaccine and a friend of mine said, oh, I hear what you're saying, but I do work in care um, and I don't agree with it, but I had mine yesterday and he died of cancer and they looked and there on the death certificate was COVID-19. Why is this incessant need for news and I think it's again it's mind control this is what mm. it's all about it's you're told often enough you believe in it. Well, that is disgusting these are these are human beings we're talking about here but all it is doing is fueling the fear and there are so many of us and I have had my moments can tell you of being in fear, utter fear. The people that are still watching their mainstream news, and I don't care if it's Al Jazeera or RT, they're all the same. Um, it's uh, a word that I never thought I'd say it was mine, but it seems to be now. Every time I'm speaking to anyone, it's about research, questioning and research. H how is this going to stop? How are we going to stop this happening? Hello, my fellow inmates. Well, I've got a real treat for you today. I've got with me joining the lovely Debbie, who you may have seen recently on my page, giving her thoughts on this current virus situation. Now, the first thing you may notice about Debbie is um, something around her neck. How are you, Debbie? I'm very well. Good afternoon. I'm very well indeed. Yes. So you've noticed. And uh, it was, I, I didn't look through all of the, the comments and stuff that, that came back from that little rant that I did, um, just the first few. And uh, it just keep coming up and coming up, people noticing this clerical collar that I have on. Um, I am an ordained minister. I'm a spiritual minister and I'm independent. So it doesn't mean that I'm affiliated or fixed to the Church of England or Catholic, anything like that. Um, I mainly um, I mainly do funerals, um, wedding blessings. I can't officially marry anybody. Uh, baby naming ceremonies, um, wedding vow renewals, things like that. And I can do that with. Um... <laughs> I lost my words. Um, I can do that because uh, um, I have studied. I studied for a year to do this. It isn't something I just bought off the internet in the USA, of which I believe you can. You can just fill out a form and then you can marry people. That's what I do. Um, and the reason why in when I had my rant, I had this collar on is that I've just come back from a funeral. I don't wear it for all the funerals I do. It's if the family request it. Now, some families do request that I just wear a normal shirt with my black attire. I always wear a stole that I have on here. This re recognises who I am. But some people request the collar. So that's why I had it on. And exactly why I've got it on today, because even though I'm not working, and I do feel this is kind of like a uniform, it's like your vicar, really. If he's out and about in Sainsbury's, he's not wearing his collar. As soon as he's then doing his job, or he's, then, then he wears his collar. So why I've got it on today is because it seems that people listened more to what I had to say because I had it on. Mm. So there's no disrespect to this collar for me wearing it today. I'm doing a, a job of work speaking to you and I'm talking about what I do. No, so that's, the expl that's my explanation. I needed to get it out there. The, the no. people that were saying, how can a woman of the cloth um, cuss? Because apparently I said, God's sake, and mm. I said, hell. 
Wow. Well, I know um, a lot Never. of people um, you resonated with, and I think it shocked a lot mm. of people seeing, um, you know, a minister speaking out like this. Yes. Um, yes. I had so many people ask me questions to me, and they were desperate for me to um, to interview you. Um, some of the questions I was getting is, um, you, you say you do a lot of funerals. What would you say... I mean, we, we're told people dropping like flies from this deadly virus. Mm. What would you mm. say that... Um, is, is your workload gone up in the last year from, from funerals? No. <laughs> no, no, it hasn't. Um, last year, compared, so 2020 compared with 2019, there weren't any more. There weren't any more. Um, one of the last ones that I did last year, actually, I spoke to the crematorium staff there and said that I actually hadn't had any more um, work because people were saying to me you must oh you must be doing loads of funerals with all these people dying and I said well no so I spoke to the crematorium staff and they said um, well we were we did have a busy period we did I said but because people were coming in um, and they needed to be cremated but nobody could be there then there's no point in employing somebody like me. So that's why, which I think is a real shame. Mm. Um, I have done funerals where there have been two people, I've done two or three, where there have been two people. And one that really, really touched me was, um, so I'm, I'm there taking the funeral. And the only people there were the two daughters of the lady that had passed, uh, middle age as well, my age ladies. So one was sat on one side of the chapel. They came in separately. The other was sat on the other side, both crying into their tissues and keep looking at each other. So that they couldn't be together. They both walked out separately, went outside, stood their social distancing and just cried and desperately wanted to hug each other. Well, I'm sorry. I think if that had been me and my brother and something had happened, we'd have hugged each other. They'd, they'd just like, come on, I'm not, this is my mother. And um, it touched me. I was so sad for those, for those ladies. Um, that, was, that was one that really struck me that this isn't right. No, is and, I mean, and they weren't even mean? allowed to touch the coffin. They're not allowed to touch the coffin. You know, people go out and they touch it and they said, no, you couldn't touch it. And I said, why? I said, look, I'm not being um, silly here, but that is going to be going straight through them being burnt. What the heck's the problem? And this lady said, oh, well, I, I've got to think of my staff here. That they, they could have it. They've touched it. It's going through to my staff. And I said, well, I don't know any crematorium where the staff don't wear gloves. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, so. Sad. Yeah. I mean, so it that's is what sad. a modern funeral is like now. People have got to, like, sit apart. I mean, a lot of yeah. um, people haven't even seen their loved ones, you know, um, before they, they yeah. died, like grandparents. Yeah. And, like, yeah. So now it's literally in a service. You'd like people are split out and it's still they're separated like that. Yeah, still being still being separated. Um, the the thought that your loved one has been taken away, either took away from the care home or went to hospital or took away from their home, you're then not allowed to be with them. You're not allowed to sit with them or be with them in their last hours, and then you're not allowed to be at the funeral. Mm. What is that all about? That is that's I, a good well, observation. I, for me, it's disgusting. <laughs> it is appalling. But then we see sometimes double standards, like we saw um, uh, poor Thomas, um, Tom Moore yeah. the other day, and of course his family was allowed yeah. in, um, a bit of yeah. double standards there. But one thing about yeah. the video that you made was um, that particular day, um, the grieving family, um, you mentioned that they were extremely upset because this person, once again, had the C word on their death certificate when it was, yes. wasn't that at all. Mm. Is that a common well, thing that you come across? Um, unfortunately, yeah, well, common. Uh, uh, for me, it's, it's feeling like it's common because I keep hearing it time and time again. The, um, I, I listened back to what I'd said, and that actually is ever so slightly not quite right, but I'll tell you why. I was, so I'm with this family um, taking the service. Um, I do know about the health of the person that passed i do not know what was on their death certificate but literally as i did that funeral and got into the car the first message was from somebody else to say about their father so i, I got it it was in my head so um but that doesn't really make any difference does it i still then got this message about them now two days previously i'd um had a phone conversation with my friend who I haven't obviously seen for a long time. And she said that her husband's dad 
had died. And she said, yeah, that's right, because he died of cancer. But they put COVID-19 on the death certificate. Now, 2020, another close friend of mine, um, his mum had passed the year before, but in 2020, his dad died, but died of old age, dementia. Um, and again, COVID-19. Now, I do believe he's taking that further. I'm not quite sure who it is that he wants to take it further with. He did mention the word sue. I don't know how you can who you can sue about that. But surely that's illegal. Mm. It I has mean, to be a falsifying mm. claims, surely. I mean, how, how are the families felt about this? Have they, have they told you how they feel? Um, they were angry. But, you know, I think the, the most distressing thing was that then they just accepted it, that it had happened. Mm. And this is what I'm it's finding. Mm. Yes, yeah, this is what I'm finding. It, uh, uh, just only today, it was about something was online about the vaccine. And a friend of mine said, oh, I hear what you're saying, but I do work in care um, and I don't agree with it. But I had mine yesterday. Mm. So there is some sort of. Um, numbing influence yeah. that all of and we we know this if information just keeps bombarding us bombarding mm. us bombarding us a lie a lie a lie a lie that lie then w we get convinced that it's true exactly and, and i think this is what's happening it's it's joseph gorbals all over isn't it just pumping it in pumping it in until people accept it um mm. and we know the mainstream media are doing that um um, I think you mentioned before, like when other people have, they've been in care homes and, and um, around their more elderly parents' house and they've got the news on all the time. It's rolling news and they don't talk about anything else, do they? Yeah, um, absolutely um, um, rolling. Um, um. And it, but it doesn't. It says, and why do they watch it? Because it's rolling along the bottom. It says breaking news. Mm, well, if not. you look at that breaking news, that breaking news is being repeated Mm. all the time so it's not breaking news but it's, it's like not. anything you know you you color it red or you flash it up in a particular type of the screen that's going to grab someone's attention mm. so the bit at the bottom breaking news and it's a death toll mm. i just um i was speaking to someone this morning and just said oh we need to we need to watch the news i said okay watch the news in the morning then turn it off or mm. put your series on um put a, the movies on put documentaries on i said why is this incessant need for news? And I think it's, again, it's mind control. This is what mm. it's all about. It's You're told often enough, you believe in it. And it's fear. The fear. It is fear, fear, that this fear. Is, um, We've seen right. posters go up recently. And yeah, they're telling us everywhere. the NHS is on its last legs, which is the same every yeah. year. But then we yeah. hear other um, information as well. That um, Is it true that um, if you have COVID on your death certificate, then they make more money out of that too? Now, this is something, um, and I, I read a lot, research a lot, I have the information, and unfortunately, sometimes I don't retain the information well. So what I'm doing now, as soon as I get it, I'm actually printing it off mm. so that I've got it and got it to hand. Great because tip. I was only asked this morning, well, how much are they getting then? It was like, and I remember reading something, so mm. I can't quote it, but it was along the lines of somebody dying is about nine ten quid something like that somebody um more well, like they were saying with covid it was about 18 but if you're on a ventilator it's 32 uh -huh. it, it was along those lines so you can't quote me because I'm, I'm not quoting anything um because I've, I've probably got the numbers wrong but i know it came up so my thing this afternoon is to go back through all my information mm. find it out and have it there because there it was along with all of the numbers and then you know, we the know numbers that, um... from 2019 2020 and a, they haven't really changed. It's no. just been a bad year. And we know that um, doctors make money from administering the vaccine as well, because we see that um, they're oh, yes. desperate to push this out um, yeah. to everyone. Absolutely. Um, mm. and there's, there's no, we, we still don't know the justification for this, because Chris Whitty himself said that for the vast majority of people, if they're fit and healthy, it's just like having a minor cold. That's that's what he said. So why yeah. would we risk putting this into our bodies? Um, I don't know. I mean, let me, mm. would you have the vaccine? Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Do you know what? They'd have to come here. Oh, I shouldn't say this. They'd have to come here and hold me down and push that devil in because there is no way I would have that. As I, I don't know whether it was on the last... Um, 
the last video that I did or one from last year. But um, no, I don't take, uh, take, take, don't take anything that I've researched into mm -hmm. and found as something in there that I do not like and is no better than me not having it. Mm -hmm. I didn't take my cancer treatment because I chose to go down a different route. I don't take any of my jabs that they say I should, I, I, not that I should have, but they say if you're going on holiday and they, are you going to this country or you should have this, mm -hmm. you should have that. I don't take that. I don't take malaria tablets. Have you seen what's in these, mm -hmm. in these jabs? Oh my goodness. Well, all you have to do is research and you can see what is in this. Well, actually, we keep calling it a vaccine, but it's not a vaccine. I can't remember what it's called, but it's not a vaccine. And even if you if you questioned a doctor, he'd have to say, no, no, it's not. It's a I can't remember what it is. No. Someone will say someone will put it in the comments, probably. And probably this is a good point called. because the government have actually well, they've actually said, though, there's no evidence that it will stop you getting or passing no. on this, this virus. So no. What is the point of it? I don't get it. Yeah. The other thing. Yeah. So you're going to put is um it'll be you if we want to go abroad soon they will not let you unless you have this so they'll be putting sanctions on us can mm. you can you see that happening yes but i don't want to say yes because because I'd, I'd like to keep as positive as possible mm. and if i if i say yes it might just happen <laughs> but um that's what they want mm. that's yeah. what they want i think i think it's gonna excuse me it's gonna bite them in the bum mm. <laughs> because um I do believe that even though there's a lot of people who are saying, but if it stops me from going on holiday, I'll have it. And I'm like, Lordy, Lordy, I can't believe somebody just said that. But there are many, many of us who will not, mm. who just will absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely And I, I believe there will be companies who will join with airlines and will say, okay, so we're going to cater for the ones that don't. I'm sure they will. There is something in the pipeline already, I believe. Ranks. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Another yeah. thing as well, you, yeah. you offer a lot of emotional support to many people. Mm. Um, and we know we've been told that suicide rates are on the rise. Um, yeah. Have you seen a big, any increase in mental health issues over this last year? Because it's been crippling for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, again, it's fear, fear-based um, which is just being fed and fed and fed all the time. And can you imagine, can you imagine being frightened of something? I don't know. Let's say, right, I have a fear of snakes because I do actually. I don't know where it's come from. I have this phobia about snakes. Well, can you imagine if somebody told me, oh, did you realise that actually we're, we're on this place, just here, there's like this little floodplain base right outside your place where, where the snakes are. Oh, my God. Well, I wouldn't go out. So that's my fear. I wouldn't go out. I'm sure I'd have, have some treatment or something. But there's, and because of fear-based, I'm going to call it propaganda, mm. it really is affecting people's mental health. Oh. Fear will reduce your immune system, will mm. reduce it. And no, and no good anybody on here saying it doesn't because it's a proven fact. Yes, it does. If you're continually in fear, you're in anxiety and you're in stress and that completely brings you down. How many times have we been anxious and stressed and whatever and then caught a cold? Mm. That's, That's because uh, our, of our immune system. And the thought that there are people living inside who want to get out and calm. Mm. Then, then you've got the people who are living in a situation which isn't so great inside, mm. and it's now a prison. Mm. We're, we're, we're human beings and we like human contact. It's all part of being a human being. Mm. And by not seeing just other humans, let alone our families, mm. our loved ones, our grandchildren. You know, mum, my, my dad's 92 this year, mum's 87, and I dropped a newspaper at the door. Yeah. Now, I used to go tweet, in, uh, but now we're in this lockdown. I can't. I'm not in their bubble. Yeah, what it's not the heck psychological that about? torture on, on, on many people. And like yeah. you said, it's those basic um, forms of contact that we're missing out on. But the social distancing, yeah. they use these key words, but it's anything but social, really, because it's something the CIA said that um, they used to, um, yeah. to keep people apart. You know, they don't want people in close proximity talking to each other, really. They seem yeah. to be able to control all the digitalness. Yeah. Um, and again, also, the, yeah, the CIA coined the phrase conspiracy theorists. And um, they yeah. try to mock or laugh at anyone who goes out their way yeah. to do their own research. And you picked up on a really good yes. point there. People must do their own research on yes. this. 
Yes, you know? definitely, definitely. Um, it's uh, a word that I never thought I'd say it was mine, but it seems to be now. Every time I'm speaking to anyone, it's about research, questioning and research. Um, and uh, just today, there was somebody who said something. I, I think I've just put something up about the vaccine, people having having the vaccine. And, um, and she said um, about research, and she said, well, you research it, then you let me know. Easy. I know but I have. No, I'm asking you to research, because if you research, wouldn't it be wonderful if you researched something that made sense to you or you researched something I hadn't? I mean, I, I mean, I can tell you, Martin, I'm not bothered if somebody turns around and proves me wrong. Please prove me wrong. Prove me. Prove to me. Give me the proof that the masks work. Give me the proof that that vaccine isn't doing or what it is doing. Because mm. now, unfortunately, we're getting countries that are coming up with another death toll. Uh -huh. And the death toll is just after having the vaccine. But one thing I've noticed, and I'm pretty sure this is going to happen, is that when people were dying um, and we were saying, I'm saying the people who were going, this, this isn't all down to this COVID, were saying, yes, but they were aged, they were vulnerable, and they had underlying health conditions. And everyone who's pro this COVID pandemic is saying, no, 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 they died of COVID. Now you wait. If they start dying, which they have, of the vaccine, they'll start saying, but they had underlying conditions. Yeah. But they were old. They already had pneumonia. They already had this. You wait. Double you can, standards. It's going to be You could never can... argue with people like that. They've been absolutely no. radicalised. And um, no, they, that's they call right. like people anti-vaxxers, but it's not about being anti-vaccine. It's about... No having a safe vaccine that that's yeah really cool. because i'd be quite if this you know this is all true then i'm quite happy to go along with this but there's yeah. no evidence to support it and like you said i no. want to be proven wrong on this because i don't want this to this horror to continue for no yeah. reason but it just exactly. does seem like it's sort of complete exactly. horror with no justification for it yeah and it's really something lines. that people get over night is it over 99 percent that people yeah, get over really this high really hard. i mean i i can come from um because covid is the new c word because the c word used to be cancer and um and i think i said that in a few years uh, going back a few years if you mentioned oh um someone's got cancer the first thought probably me included was oh how awful because mm. you think they're gonna die yeah they've got cancer you know and now it's the same with covid oh so-and-so has got covid it's, it's all over facebook they, they don't even put oh can you send healing prayers to so-and-so they're not well it's all they've got covid and it's mm. like oh because the first thing is they're practically ordering the flowers they're going to die oh. so it, this is awful because actually they're not mm. over 99 percent of people will get over it i had cancer mm. yeah i've been through that I've, I've i've been through the fear of the diagnosis, knowing that, looking at what, you know, what I can do to, to help myself to get over it. And I take lots of supplements that boost my immune system daily. I've never felt so well. Mm. Now, do you know what? I could go out and if someone's, I suppose, just coughed over there or going to lick me or something, then I might get this COVID. I might get this bad flu that's going about. But you know what? I will fight that and I will probably in a couple of weeks be okay. I know all the things to do. Mm. That's it's not a death system. sentence. They don't give enough we have an immune system. Yeah, we have an immune system and it's amazing. But the more, the more we don't go out, the more we suppress the, the air we breathe, the more we don't interact. It's like kids in, when I was young, I used to sit in the mud and like me, eat worms and goodness knows what. It's got a great immune system. Mm. When I had children young, I didn't antiseptic everything. No. Wasn't doing the floors and the, everything's got antiseptic or antiviral or anti something, which oh. is affecting our immune system. Do you know what? I've never had a virus wow. ever. Oh. I've never had a, you know, these sickness and diarrhea things. Never had it. Oh. Nor of my kids. Incredible. I mean, yeah, and well, you're quite right. Look <laughs> after yourselves. <laughs> People need to start questioning this big time now because yeah. um, there, there's, it's, it's nobody, it's so clear that something else is going on and, there could be a yeah. number of reasons. Um, obviously, yeah. exerting control, destroying the economy yeah. as a couple. But I just please, please, people, please do your own research on this. It is so important. Mm. Mm. Look for yourself. Mm. Don't rely on us. Go and look for yourself. Just scratch past yeah. the surface, and then you'll realise very quickly that things are not adding up. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, I just, I always like to finish 
on um, a positive <laughs> note, <laughs> so it's not all mm. doom and gloom. I know. And I was wondering if you had any words for us, perhaps that we you could um, give us a bit of a lift. Well, it isn't all doom and gloom. Of course, it isn't all doom and gloom. Um, but the first thing I would do is, if you do need to read the news, um, listen to the news, listen to it in the morning, and turn that telly off. <laughs> get it outside. I mean, I know we're meant to be getting snow tomorrow, but look at it. Blue sky, sunshine. And don't wear your mask if you're outside. You have to wear it for your work. I un I understand. But please just get as much of that wonderful fresh air in as you possibly can. I think the thing about researching as well is that even if I've really hacked somebody off by what I've said, it might just sow a little seed to do some research. You should research everything. We research a job. So research everything. But one of the lovely things that has happened through this is that maybe not the coming together physically, but the coming together of people to help one another. And that's what we do. If you're a human being, that's what you want to do. We're social creatures. We are social creatures. We are, and I'm getting into my spiritual stuff now, but we are earth beings. We're earth dwellers. So that's why we like to get our feet in the sand and go outside and get your feet on the grass and, and be one with the earth and out with the trees and down by the sea and stuff like that. We're light beings. We love the light. And by staying in all the time, that's going to bring down your mood. So get yourself out. And I think there are quite a lot of people that I know now know who their neighbours are. Yeah. Now maybe there's been a community thing started up and someone's done your shopping or someone's delivered your prescription or, or just, you know, wrong somebody to see if they're okay. That's a good thing. That's where we're being human beings again and not being controlled and Excellent. robotic. So that's probably the best thing I can think of to come out no, with. That, really. That's fantastic. That is a very positive thing. And um, that's what I've said as well. And in, in, in this horror of the last 12 months, I've come to contact with a lot of decent people um, and that's been one yeah. excellent thing. But I want to thank you very much, Debbie, for taking time out. My pleasure. To join me. My pleasure. Um, I'll drop your links in the comments below so people can... Okay can follow you um because i i was getting so many messages um who is this lady he's a brave lady i bet and, uh, <laughs> i know brave oh my <laughs> <goodness>. <laughs> will you come on again in the future of course of course i'm sure there'll be more stuff to uh to discuss by then i'm sure there will be <laughs> but no thank you very much you take you're very care. welcome you're very welcome thank you for asking me thank you very much bye-bye thank you bye-bye